So welcome everyone. This is the first cohort of the ISLP uh, book club. Uh, we're going. Ah, there is something new in the in the in the meeting. In the meeting. Hello, Sho. Hi. Hi. So uh, we were just starting the meeting. So I'll continue. Uh, basically, this is the first cohort of the book club introduction to statistical learning with Python. This is a new book. It was released in well the, the last month in July. And it, it's really the same as the uh, one that we are probably most of us accustomed to. The book uh, introduction to statistical learning with R. It's really mostly the code that has been changed, uh, adapted to Python, but not not really in the in the Python esque way to to do things like for example to use a lot of a uh, scikit learn for the for the libraries and the models to load but the, the author have adapted the code to have some similarities to how it was used for R so if, maybe a little example of that is that a uh, well this is a book this is just some lab for chapter six but as you can see there is also an ISLP package similar to the ISLR package uh, and it will allow us to maybe kind of mimic how the code was uh, when you use the code in the R version of the book but now in this scenario uh, we're working with Python uh, Maybe because there is already four of us, uh, we can, before diving into the introduction, maybe we can introduce ourselves. Uh, and then I will explain a little bit uh, uh, about how the club will run, uh, also about the notes that we will be using, well, that we could use, so we can then set, in, set an agreement on that. So, well, let me begin on that. Uh, my name is Lucio Cornejo. Uh, I I am an undergraduate student in Latin America. I study pure mathematics. I have already uh, finished the ISLR uh, book club. I, I actually was uh, the cohort, how do you say, the leader, cohort, cohort leader, I, I don't remember, uh, for the last cohort that there was. It, it just finished like two weeks ago. And, and I really wanted to join this this book club because I am also interested in learning uh, Python. I only have a little bit of experience with it. I can go next. So hi everyone, my name is Lydia Gibson and I'm really excited to read this book, Introduction to Statistical Learning with Python. Um, I'm more or less in, not quite completely new to Python, but I haven't used it nearly as much as I've used R. Um, so right now I work as a data scientist at Intel, but I just finished up my master's in statistics this May. Um, so with having studied statistics, um, ISLR was a book that um, I did touch upon in some of my classes specifically like the um, statistical learning class, as well as a bit in my linear regression class. And now as I'm gonna be starting to use Python more for work, and I'm definitely looking forward to like learning more about um, using Python and especially how it relates to like statistical learning. Um, so yeah, so I'm really excited for this book club and really excited to read along with you all and get to know you all. So thanks. And thanks, Lucio, for um, hosting the book club. OK, so I should go sec now. Uh, actually, I am doing PhD uh, in engineering. And uh, I know something about the this book in R. But I for the statistics, sometimes if I do some freelancing work, I use R for that. but. This could be a new experience for me because Python is not much popular in case of statistics. So let's see what we learn with uh, Lucio.
Oh, there is a message uh, by Mateo. Uh, okay, so you can turn your mic right now. I think you were also in the ISLR previous cohort, right? Uh, I think in the last meetings you you were also joining us, Mateo. Yes, the the last cohort, like a couple of weeks ago. Or maybe I am getting my names confused. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, well, nice to meet you, everyone. And uh, now let's continue. Well, first, uh, from from what I have heard from you, uh, I do guess that most of you are are already familiar with the theory that we are going to be covering in the book. Uh, so maybe the the first thing that we could set along is. Do we want to cover the theory and the and the exercises? I mean, the laboratory and such, or do you only want to work on the code? What do you prefer? Uh, in my case, I, I do. I would like to cover the theory and the exercises. Yeah, I would say I'm also. I'm interested in both the theory as well as the exercises. Um, like I like the idea of being able to compare how it's how some of the um like the code in R compares to the Python. Okay, great. In in the chat, they also say that we can look at both of them. So well, that was the first uh, thing to set alone. So uh, now the next one was about the notes. So. Perhaps if, if this is the first time uh, for anyone here or maybe looking at the future video of this uh, meeting, uh, let's, let's just take a look at a, a brief description of how these meetings work. Uh, we, will, we are going to be meeting once a week. Uh, we will be alternating also one week the theory part of a chapter and the next week the exercises, the lab section. Uh, we don't really cover that in the meetings, but it, it is understood that on their own, everyone will have to do it so that they can also work on the exercises. Uh, now, it's not necessary uh, for anyone who is already in this uh, book club or who wants to join to already be familiar with the material. So if, one, if some concept is new to someone uh, in some chapter, Still, that person is completely free to, to, to present it. So we are we are all learning over here. And and the last part, uh, before we start with the proper introduction chapter, is about the the notes or the slides. For example, the the notes that I am showing right now, uh, these are the ones that the the cohorts of the ISLR book have already been developing. Uh, because a theory is the same, I was of the idea that maybe we can we can work with the same notes of in the theory. There are parts where are some R code is being executed. Uh, so maybe it, it will just take a little bit of modification if one needs to, let's say maybe copy paste them into the actual notes that we are going to be using. So for example, over here, they use R. Uh, so on that note, really the choice is between using Bookdown, so this type of format over here, or using Quarto that would produce a, a book like this. Uh, the, the main difference and the main issue is going to be that if we use Bookdown, well, it will be a little bit hard uh, for really for anyone to even render the book on its own because we'll have to use our particulate package, and that is going to ask you for the path of your Python, uh, well, for your, for the path of Python in your, in your machine. So it's going to be a little bit of a, an issue uh, for anyone to be able to render each book. But maybe it works some, some, but when another person wants to render the book, uh, the Python path needs to be changed. 
And, and so the alternative that does solve that issue is to use Quarto. Uh, we would get a book like this, so it's really a little bit similar. And as you can see, you can use Python really directly. For example, over here, they create a tuple. And the code that creates this, we can see it's over here. And it's very similar to how we are accustomed to. It's really just a chunk, and we use Python instead of R. And we can use Python directly without, without the need of specifying a, a Python path for the compiler to use. Uh, just a last note is that there, there may be some trouble if we use Quarto, uh, as John mentioned. For example, if we were to present uh, because this is supposed to be slides. Uh, it, it's supposed to be some very short text, and and we can we can look at it like this. It's just a very uh, small summary of the content of the book. However, if we take a look at how the other cohorts have been using Quarto for books, it's not really this a uh, slide. My sorry, a slide. A uh, Type of presentation, it's more like an actual book. So that would be a difference. But I, I mean, I, I am okay with that, that the notes look like a book instead of slides. Uh, so that we can all, all work with Python directly using this fashion. Uh, so now it comes out, it comes down to a vote. So I vote for using Quarto this type of manner, instead of using Bookdown. Uh, any, any other votes, Bookdown or Quarto? I'd be okay using Quarto. I mean, in general, I've used it a bit, so I'd be open to like even learning more about using Quarto and especially using Python in Quarto. In Quarto, actually, we do produce some kind of presentations like with the Quarto presentations. Can that go to a website as well? Uh, do you mean like this? This is in a website uh, generated via Quarto. No, I mean Quarto presentations and then we render oh. it to GitHub. Oh, like a slide. And... I mean, yeah, because uh, Quarto has an option for Quarto presentations, and then we can render it to GitHub, I suppose. Mm, yeah, that's true. It will look like Bookdown, but maybe format will be like uh, sharing and slides on our Markdown. Yes, yeah, so, so like presenting in in a sharing and manner, but then uploading it to the to the Quarto book. I I am asking about different like Quarto presentation. There is an option in Quarto to use the Quarto presentation format because this format is actually Quarto website format. If I'm not wrong, yeah, it's a book with Quarto. Yeah, Quarto has actually three three options: presentation, book, and website. Mm -hmm. So which mm -hmm. one is this? This is a book. This one is a book, okay. Quarto book format, okay. Yeah, I think yeah, okay, Quarto... But... I was just gonna say, yeah, I think you have the option of making like, I believe it's reveal JS slides with Quarto. I don't know if that was what you meant. Anyways, uh... Yeah. I, I think uh, for me it works whatever the format is but I am I was just saying about there is an option of uh, Quarto presentation in Quarto. Mm -hmm. I mean yeah that's true although maybe uh, because most of us uh, have already voted for the book format uh, maybe just to 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 get an agreement we would we would work with the book then. Sorry, sorry, with the quarto book format. Although it, it as you say, it, it could also be used as a presentation, but um, I think maybe we could settle on the quarto book just for all of us to have the same 
uh, matter of presenting. Uh, Lydia shared the link. Ah, yes, the slides using different manners of presentation. Okay, so corto book. Uh, there's going to be some issues in the beginning, uh, as Leon said, uh, but uh, they can be easily fixed. So I will fix them once we create the, the, the repository. Uh, I will have to copy a little bit of what the other Python book club did. So I will, well, I don't know if I have to create it or, or young, but uh, I will make sure to get the settled so that we can start with the notes. Uh, okay, so that was uh, what we have to come to an agreement. So now we can start with the actual content of the book. Uh, it's really an introduction. It's, I think in the book it's only like 15 pages. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so chapter one, introduction. Uh, well, we're, we're going to get a sense of what statistical learning means. Uh, how this book uh, will teach us about that and applications of it. Uh, we're also going to get a little mathematical sense of the algorithms that we will be covered. However, uh, it's really a brief description. Uh, I think there are no proofs in the actual book. However, there is a, there's another book. In a sense, it's kind of complementary to this one. Uh, it is called Elements of Statistical Learning. Um, it's also by via, sorry, by the same authors. And it is more mathematically formal and also more rigorous. So if, if one wants to maybe get a, a deeper understanding of any of the or any of the algorithms that we are we well that we are going to be learning, uh, you can also check out that book. Uh, Uh, it's over here. No, actually, it's an old version. Okay, but that was the name. So, what is statistical learning? Uh, it's a theoretical foundation for the machine learning algorithms and such. Well, in the book, it does say that it is like a, a mixture between a statistic. Uh, functional analysis. Uh, well, this part is a, it's a field of mathematics. However, uh, from all of what we learned in the last cohort of ISLR, uh, there's really not much functional analysis to, to be covered. It's really more a statistics um, and basic probability and <clears throat> optimization, sometimes linear and sometimes nonlinear. Uh, the type of algorithms that we'll be covering in this book, uh, there's two types. There is supervised learning. Uh, that is when there is something clear that you want to predict. And unsupor unsupervised learning, uh, that is more like the types of, or there is no specified predictor. Uh, however, there is some clustering that you want to perform for the data. As I explained over here, supervised is like building a model to predict an output using inputs as training data. Um, well, and also testing as testing data. And unsupervised, there is input. So you have your initial data, but there is no specified output. Uh, you're mostly interested in finding relationships and extractor. Uh, and it's not like this type of algorithms are completely separate. Sometimes uh, you start with this, so you classify, you, sorry, you create cluster out of your data, and then you use some supervised algorithms in order to understand this type of structure that you learned. So YSLR, well, in this case, YISLP, uh, well, this book facilitates uh, the use of um, fundamental or basic machine learning algorithms. Uh, as I said, you don't really require a lot of background uh, in order to understand the text. It's 
some fundamental graphs graph of statistics uh, and probability. Uh, uh, maybe a, a little bit intermediate level linear algebra. Um, well, the initial book was in R, however, as we know, and as Lydia mentioned, uh, Python seems to be more popular in the in the actual field, like in practical scenarios. So when you will work for some company, so in that sense, it will be very useful for us to also learn uh, how to perform this type of algorithms using Python. Ah, and there was an interesting point uh, they mentioned over here. It, it's not only learning these algorithms in Python, but uh, production wise. So like uh, talking a little bit about backend or servers, uh, Python is more used uh, compared to R uh, for those type of scenarios. So like connecting some, uh, sorry, running some model, not from uh, for your from your computer or something, but from some servers. So Python is a language uh, that is more commonly used in that type of a scenario compared to R. So it, it, it is simpler to connect Python in that sense, instead of combining R and Python for that type of a scenario. Uh, let's see some premises of ISLR. An important one, I would say that is this one over here that this type of algorithms that we're going to be covering, uh, they are not to be understood as black boxes. So like some machinery that produces a desired output, but that we don't really have an idea of, of what is going on. Like, and let me say this in quotes, like of what is the, the computer thinking or what is the process that it took in order to reach some conclusion. So in that sense, uh, we do get an understanding of the of the algorithms that we will be using. Uh, maybe the counter example would be in the deep learning chapter because deep learning at least so far is very quite full of black boxes. But for the most part, we do get a good enough understanding of what is going on with each of uh, with each of the algorithms that we will be covering. <laughs> mm. And as I mentioned, uh, we get a good enough grasp of the algorithm that it's not like we need to create a new one. So it's only a superficial understanding. Mm. Uh, and we do cover some uses of uh, of these methods for real world problems, particularly with the data sets provided, uh, well, in this case, uh, from the ISLP package. Uh, they show us also those packages in, sorry, those data sets in the end. So uh, maybe a little bit of notation. Well, we set on N as the number of observations or rows if we are thinking in a table format. P as a number of variables or features. Again, or co as columns, if we think of a table. Um, well, this is just um, symbols in mathematics, and we are already used to those. Um, let's see. So the book consists of different chapters if divided between two. First a theory and then there is a lab and then is the exercises. And we're going to be covering some classic linear methods. Also, well, also non-linear ones, none. Yes, also non-linear ones, uh, particularly when you work with uh, like polynomial feet of data and such. Also resampling, so things like bootstrap, uh, or cross validation. Uh, these updates, I think they mean the part of regularization. I'm not quite sure. Um, beyond beyond linear linearity, uh, I guess it means like the nonlinear algorithms or something like the deep learning chapter or such and such, because those are the ones that come in the end of the book. 
So, well, we don't have an ISLR2 package because this is not R, but as, as I showed in the beginning, and there is an ISLP package that comes with Python. Um, well, I guess most of us are already somewhat familiarized with Python, so maybe just as an example, the, the way to do it, sorry, to, the way to install it would be something like pip install, and then the, main, the name of the package, right? So, I shall see, I guess. So, and executing the command from your terminal. Some useful resources. Uh, well, you have also the book in the R version. However, uh, I think it's the actual same theory, like word for word. Uh, there is also a course on EDX uh, that covers this type of concepts. Uh, however, I do I do recommend uh, this part over here because if you take a look uh, at the videos that actually they are also produced by the by the authors of the book, usually they also mention stuff that it is it's not even covered in the book. So it's actually quite useful because it's not only like a summary that still it, it is quite. Uh, it, they provide quite a good explanation, but they even add on on some of these concepts. So I do recommend to also take a look at the videos for the chapters uh, that the author has produced. Uh, in this case, because this is the most up-to-date uh, version of the book, we will be covering the same as the, the second edition of the R book. So and we will be covering something like, let's see, classification, regression algorithms, and decision trees. Also some up-to-date algorithms about decision trees. They, I think they mentioned that, I think it was called XGBoost, something like that. And let's see, it's for vector machines and more modern techniques or, or <laughs> type of algorithm. So cases like deep learning, survival analysis, uh, and in the book that's it with multiple testing. That it really doesn't have much to do with the previous chapters, but I don't know, it ends at that. So, so it is what it is. Let's see, the book is divided into 13 chapters. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we see supervised and unsupervised algorithms. So, <coughs> sorry, let's see, we start with differentiating between those, differentiating between when you want to predict some numeric value or some categorical value. We also see some linear, uh, linear models. So for example, linear regression, uh, well, this is almost like a linear model. Uh, let's see. There is a resampling chapter. I think this is what I mentioned about the modern updates to the to the linear model. So stuff like regularization in order to mitigate uh, the, the number of predictors that you use in your model. So sometimes too much predictors is actually a bad thing. And as I mentioned, something like nonlinear models, like a polynomial fit, usually they are at most like a polynomial of degree three. I think we even use five ones, uh, but only up to that degree because if not, maybe you're committing or refitting of the data. We can also do this locally, so, so piecewise for the data. Uh, let's see some three methods. And some deep, deep learning. And uh, this part about finding patterns or structuring the data. So like generating clusters in, in different fashions. So different ways to clusterize, clusterify the data. And again, this chapter, I think it doesn't really have to do with, with the previous ones. But still, it is useful, particularly in a scenario where uh, the data is quite highly dimensional. Uh, 
uh, well, some examples of how this type of algorithm techniques can be used. Let's see, they, they mentioned identify the risk factors for some type of cancers. Uh, let's see, predict whether someone will have a heart attack uh, using some specific input data. Uh, email spam spam detection. When I'm not, I am not sure which type of algorithm would be used in this case. And uh, we see some we see some use of classifying. Um ah, there is a comment. Ah, classification. Okay, thanks, Lydia. And then they mention establish a relationship between salary and demographic variables. I know that sounds like something to try with some linear model. Uh, okay. Well, I would assume that this, these data sets are also in the Python version of this package. So these are the ones that we will be working with along the labs. Uh, I think also the exercises of the book. Uh, well, we already have to to look at it right now because we will be working with them as we as we work with the sorry as we go along with the book. So, I mean, this will be clear uh, when we start looking at the chapters, uh, and that seems to be it. As I said, the introduction is only fifteen pages, so. Let's see, for the next chapter, we'll be starting with statistical learning and what it is. Uh, and, and I think it is in the chapter uh, where we uh, I know, maybe not. I don't know. I think maybe it's not in this chapter. So I, I will not spoil it. Let's see. Uh, yes, that, that was basically it really. Uh, there was a, I think it was the first and the second video for this book lab about Python for data analysis. There was a video where, where they explain basically how to work with Quarto, and how to also modify this type of repo so that we can all uh, create this, um, this project of slides. So I, I, will, I will look for it and share it in the slide, but, that's it for now. Let's see only, let's close with the part about the discussion. If there is someone that has already signed up for the next chapter, uh, we see that Ricardo, who, well, he said that he wasn't, going, he wasn't going to be able to come today, but he has, he has already signed up. Uh, it's not necessary that if you, for example, if you sign up for the theory of one chapter, that you also sign up for the exercises. You don't have to do that, although most tend to do it. So maybe I don't know, have that in mind. However, uh, just to end, is there someone that wants to present the following chapter? I could do the second part. I'm going to be traveling next weekend, so I can't do the first part of chapter two, but I can do the presentation on the 27th. Okay, I will take that one. Well, then I can do the, the theory part for that one. Okay, thank you, Lydia. Um, also, thank you all of you for coming. Yeah. That's it. I, I will share the, the links a little bit later. And, See you next week. Bye. Thank you, Lucio. Bye. Bye, everyone.